And we are back. Dave and Matt in the morning here at 7.17 a.m. Uh, that voice you hear is that of City Councilman Steve Maskingo. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Well, what did you guys do to us last night? We didn't do anything to you. We we, we, we <laughs> heard about a lot of interesting things. And if nice. you've already picked up the paper this morning, you saw that we um, d- we heard a presentation on our the consultant that was hired by uh, our downtown TIF that um, uh, kind of lays out a plan of what downtown might look like as it redevelops. And it was um, it was a it master was, plan. Yeah, it was quite interesting. It was one of those things that um, you know we hear a lot of presentations during work session that you're like, okay, we we, we got it, but not this one. You could have spent a lot more time on it. There was a lot of information in it. Uh, we talked about things like streets, and we talked about brick streets. We talked about um, parking and whether or not angled parking or parallel parking was more appropriate for downtown. We talked about are one-way streets effective for downtown, or is it time to make streets go back to two-way, which Did I think— come to any conclusions? I, the, 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 the study recommends— uh, no one-way streets. Uh, I, think it gets I, I like confusing. that idea. Yeah, no, I think it's harder one, to get. One-way streets? No one-way streets downtown. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten on Avenue L and someone's coming at me, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, we talked about, um, you know, it's interesting. It, it, the, the, the plan takes the depot corridor, runs north-south, and the Broadway corridor, which would be the center street for downtown, and they, they meet at the... Um, City Bus Depot, they're on Broadway. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of the pivot for, for downtown. And their, their proposal is that that should be, an, you know, at some point in time, keep in mind we have a simultaneous study going on with City Bus that could likely recommend that that's not the best place to change buses. And so if there was another purpose for that facility, it might be a food, mar- a food, a food truck court open market kind of thing. The building's already conducive to that. And then uh, the last thing that was probably high level uh, in, in that was the discussion of some type of uh, downtown park that would kind of anchor several things, and um, that that got quite a bit of traction yesterday as well. Well, you already have a downtown park. What are you referring to as downtown park? Well, I can't tell you exactly, but it's over there. It's near Buddy Holly. Uh, there, there's a park. That's a, that's a city block. The uh, reason I know, is well, that's that's one of our our church's burrito ministries every Saturday morning, and uh, and there was a time where there was four of us in a pickup circling that park. Oh yeah, at daylight, and the policeman pulled us over and wanted to know exactly what we were doing. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're talking about the 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 park on 19th. Well, okay, right. I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly well, where it is. But well, anyway, that's, I, I can not tell important. you that what, what the proposal was is if you you can visualize where LPNL is today, which is actually I think the old first federal building, it takes up a whole city block. There's a there's a parking uh, garage there, and uh, LPNL will be um, leaving that building, moving into Citizens Tower, and so the proposal is to take that entire block, which is just east of First Methodist Church, sits right on Broadway and the potential for that to be a park. And at first, I, I, you know, my, in my mind, I thought that the, be, the highest and best use for that property was probably to sell it. And um, I really, the more I look at it, the more it makes sense. The green space makes sense. The location makes sense. And I think there's some opportunity for uh, some private support on that, and that could be a neat downtown uh, so green space. Are you all worried about the homeless population taking it over, though? I mean, that when I hear park downtown, I, I think kind of what Dave was talking about, you know, a place where, where the homeless seem to congregate. Well, I mean, that's a separate issue, not discussed in this topic, but uh, as you know, there's ongoing efforts uh, to address our homeless population. Um, hopefully, we'll get ahead of that, which is one reason we're already talking about it. We look at those communities on the homeless piece that haven't gotten ahead of it. Um, but I anticipate this is a, would be a gathering place for people downtown. Um, last Saturday, we uh, broke ground on a, a graduate student housing project. It's somewhere in the range of forty million dollar investment downtown that will begin any 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 day now. That's just uh, south of uh, the Mahon Library, and so more people 
living downtown is going to be able to support all these things. In the Metro Tower is uh, in the process of being remodeled for uh, apartments, and so we're seeing more and more activity like now, that. Most of this is private funding. It is. And, I mean, all of the what the, the new graduate housing was mm-hmm. private funded. That's correct. And so it's good. It's good to have that private investment downtown. Yeah. Mm. Well, so... Um, uh, now we were talking a little bit about the brick streets. Now the, I, and people know that I, I talk about it all the time. My aversion to the brick streets is not that they're brick; it's that they're they're tearing your car up as you're driving yeah, down. I, I said they haven't been repaired. So, so I'm not averse to brick streets, but the I guess the point we're getting at is that uh, the city wants to repair those streets. They want them to be in good repair for uh, people to be able to travel and and. Uh, my thoughts are long term that I would not live in a place like that unless I could at least travel back and forth. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. The Broadway's um, is a rough drive, and I think we all know something has to be done, um, but it has to be paid for, and there's no mechanism to pay for it at mm-hmm. this point in time. So when we talked about brick streets, we talked about hybrid brick streets. In other words, we might. The, the, the center lane might be brick and, and, and the other lanes might be asphalt. Um, maybe just the uh, crosswalks are brick just to try to preserve that effect downtown. So there's many options. Um, I've, I've spoken to a few civic groups recently and I mentioned the brick streets and I tried to get a pulse on, do you like the brick streets? Would you mind if the brick streets go away? And people are attached to the brick streets. They want to see them fixed. So you know, what you might see, and, and this is just me thinking, my opinion, you might see Broadway at some point replaced. Maybe that's a, maybe that's maybe maybe that's in a bond package. I'm I'm not sure. And I think some of the streets that are brick will not remain brick. Maybe those are hybrids. Maybe we determine some crosswalks on the on the corridors that uh uh, uh would be brick, but um, again, this is just a plan, so it's it's n- nothing set in stone. And by the way, we didn't. There's nothing funded out of this plan, and we didn't encumber any any dollars yesterday. This was just kind of a guideline as we go yeah. through the process. It's, it's of a, re- kind of a wish list, maybe, huh? It is, but some of it's very realistic. Okay. Well, the, the question then becomes: uh, if you were to adapt some of it or all of it, uh, where does the money come from? Well. I think and, there's something. I'm guessing it would be a lot of money. Yeah, I think you take it off in bites, and th- and this project is phased. Their recommendation is phased. It's like one to three years, three to five. But I think some of the things that you would tackle, possibly immediately, are this parking that I was talking about. We may make a decision on whether or not we'll angle park or parallel park yeah. downtown. Which angle parking on some of our neighbor, uh, narrow streets are dangerous. Yeah, it causes vision issues, um, and then I think uh, I, th- I I think the councils could be ready to address these uh, one way well, two way streets. Are you worried a little bit about uh, going the uh, the change in the amount of parking if you go to parallel parking? That's a great. I mean, because you're point. going you're going from probably two parking places to one parking place if you're going from an angle to a, a single. So they talked about that, uh-huh. and they talked about perception and reality. And so you can imagine this. Uh, the consultant interviewed lots of stakeholders in downtown, and the perception is there's no parking. But the reality is that there's 9,000 parking spaces downtown that we don't know where they are or if we can use them. And so one thing they've recommended is some type of parking authority downtown that inventories all the parking and works with all those uh, uh, owners of that property to be in some type of cooperative way sharing parking and so uh they've they've seen that work in other communities and so that's how we actually have a fair amount of parking we just don't use it correctly well Mm. but i mean is it it's it's areas too because some areas have parking but they don't have where you're needing to go that's right and other areas don't have parking but that's where everybody's at you know and that's where i think the problem's going to lie is how far away you're going to have to be from where you're trying to get to true i mean uh one one you know, to address that that you bring up is that there's wayfinding. In other words, we need much better signage downtown to direct people. But keep in mind it's downtown also. I mean, um, if you go to downtown Dallas, you don't expect to park right in front of where you're going. 
you're going to park three or four blocks away probably and walk. And I think that's a reasonable expectation as we develop our downtown also. Yeah. Um, well, we'll see. We, we're running up against the clock here. So uh, let's do take this break. This is, and we'll be back uh, with more of Steve, Gass, uh, Steve Massengill, our city councilman, talking about uh, uh, the city and what's going on after this. It's 7.37 a.m. as we move along this morning with uh, City Councilman Steve Massengale. And so where were we? We were talking about uh, the master plan for downtown Lubbock. And uh, it looks like there's a whole lot to it. It's uh, very thorough, but it will take a lot of money, I suppose. Yeah, I think, you know, again, it's premature to talk about the funding. Um, I think our job is to create infrastructure and make policy decisions that – uh, attract private investment but you know it's it just has a lot of interesting uh, components to it one of which is a vacancy uh, vacant building ordinance in other words we uh, it, it might be there might be some regulation about you can't just leave a building boarded up and empty and yeah. um, which goes to Matt's point he brought up which is attracts homelessness so there's I, I'm sure I, I don't know exactly where on the website I'm sure it's accessible but if you have some time to flip, get online and look through it, I, uh, I would encourage you to do so. It's very, very yeah. interesting. Well, uh, now we have South Plains College, which will soon take over, I guess, the old city hall mm-hmm. building yeah. with classes. We'll be moving and, into Citizens Tower soon. And there will be thousands of students down there. About 2,000 a day. Yeah. And so. that will be in downtown. That's a lot of folks that you'll, mm-hmm. that you'll be adding. And, of course, you're moving, uh, you're moving all the city, and well, I guess not all the city, but you're moving much of the city services to the new Citizens Tower. And how's that coming along? Good. Um, I, I walk through it every Friday right now. Um, you know, Citizens Tower is very, very close. That we finally, if you if you drive by and pay attention, I think the metal cladding on the outside is like at ninety eight percent, which to me was a big factor to look at it and say, oh, it's not done. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of streetscape and landscape work being done right now. There's several floors that are moving ready. They already have for the furniture's already in. It's, I mean, literally ready to, to go. So, um, you know, we're looking at, at this point, although later than we anticipated, probably early March right now is, is the timeline to, to get the building from our uh, contractor. Um, you know, I have to just say that as a count or I, even me personally, we're, I'm certainly disappointed that we're not in the building yet. But one thing that I think we're, we can all stand behind and we're proud of is it's still going to be on budget. So what yeah. uh, what happened to cause it where it wasn't ready? I mean, oh, there's just several factors. Or? It was a, a permanent power connection caused a delay to you know, and you can't do life safety tests. You can imagine in a building like that, you have to you have to test all the life safety systems. Well, some of those still aren't even are tested because you wait for permanent power. Then there was a you remember we had a gas line issue two or three weeks ago. Someone cut a gas line. Well, you have to all have all those things fired up, and then you have to have elevator inspections. Well, you have to wait on the state for the elevator inspections. And you're just bringing all those things together um, have created delays as we come to completion with this project. But when it's done, it's going to be a nice facility. And again, to your point, Dave, uh, we'll have uh, the ability to consolidate city services that are spread out all over downtown and other places right now. Uh, LPNL will be there. Eventually, municipal court will be there. Uh, police headquarters will be to the south, and so that really just leaves out fire, uh, fire rescue, LPD, animal services, and health department that wouldn't be centrally located. And then, you know, when Citizens Tower is done, and that 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 you know city center or whatever you want to call it, that whole complex is complete. It's going to be a catalytic project. It's going to feed all these other things that we're talking about. So uh, with the uh, police headquarters that's going out, uh, what is the timeline on that moving uh, or getting that building ready? So it's in a design phase right now, mm-hmm. and, and they go through design documents, and then they build construction documents. So you won't see ground break on that probably till 2021. Is, is that part of the whole substation kind of thing? Yeah, that's part okay. of the public safety improvements project. Keep in mind, these substations already started, and we're about to break ground on the south station. Mm-hmm. Well. Okay. Well, I'm thinking about it. Thanks for you guys finally getting Villa Hotel cleaned up. You know, we didn't have anything to do with it. 
<laughs> well, you should have took credit for it. Well, I'm not going to take credit, for, but we're glad it's cleaned up too. You know, we got we got handcuffed on that by TCEQ, and uh, I guess there was the owner of the property. I don't know all the details on it. The owner of the property. Oh, what an eyesore it was. Man, oh, it was. It's terrible. And uh, we, you know, those are those are bad situations. But I'm glad it's cleaned up. Yeah. Well, um, and downtown is beginning to is beginning really to take shape, and uh, there'll be a lot of tax new tax revenue for uh, all the new construction that's going on downtown. Yeah, it's going to be Buddy great. Holly Center. I, it's not going to pay tax, but it's, but uh, geez, what a what a great facility that's going to be. Amazing! It's going to be amazing, and uh, really excited for what downtown Lubbock could become. I am too. Uh, Seven forty-two a.m. We'll be back with more in a moment. It is 7.46 a.m. here on KFYO Mornings with Matt and Dave, and we are back with City Councilman Steve Massengale. So um, I, I want to say it was a couple weeks ago. It was probably to, uh, while Chad Hasty was gallivanting around the country. Um, Matt Crow was sitting in for him, and uh, apparently he lives kind of over in the South Overton area. And one of the big problems they had was, I guess uh, it's a an organization called Open Door, and they have... Uh, they're an outreach to homeless. Uh, it's just a homeless outreach. And what they're doing sounds great on paper, but it seems to be drawing the homeless very close to both Texas Tech and the businesses that they have out there. And um, I guess it's it's been a problem. I'd never heard of it before that. But uh, now in the uh, newspaper, I guess KCBD has done a, a story on it saying that bro- a Broadway business is calling for the homeless outreach facility to be moved. Um, what if anything, is there that the city can do about that? Well, I don't know. I don't have any details on what we could do to move it, but I would tell you uh, that I believe we have, I think we have a homeless problem. I I operate a business on Broadway. I think most people are aware of that. And um, it is not a great situation for my customers or my staff. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I couldn't even count how many times I've been called down where I have to confront somebody and ask them to leave because somebody's uncomfortable. And you can imagine, do you, would you want to come in my store if somebody was yelling well, or and saying things? Or, and they'll even just sit right in front of the door. They will. So let me just give you my two cents on homeless. Uh, I think we um, – I'm glad we're talking about it. I think we have to get ahead of it. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned on or off the air that we've seen – we're certainly aware of those communities that haven't gotten ahead of it and what it turns into. Um, I don't ever want to see what I see when I go to Austin, Texas. I, no. I, I don't want to see that here. And so, um, but you know, I for one, I'm one of seven. I'm I'm. I'd like to see us enforce our ordinances. Um, I'm I'm. I don't like the panhandling, quite frankly. I think maybe you start there. I'm. I have a hard time with the folks that sit on the corner. There's different laws around that and different ways to interpret that. But I think that um, we need to work with those agencies that serve that population. And I think we need to, uh, while we enforce these ordinances, work with our hospitals because we have a shortage of mental health beds, which is a component of all this. And we need to determine if we do want, if there's a way to find a place to serve the needs of the, the these these people uh, in their times of need. So uh, I think you'll see the city council continue to talk about it, and I'm ready. I'm just one of seven, but I'm ready to, to take some action on so it. So I, I know that a lot of people are like, well, there's just homeless, but, I mean, a lot of problems come up with homeless as far as safety is concerned. Are we worried that the homeless population just seems to be getting closer and closer to the Texas Tech campus and even at this point is is – right on it well it's a safety concern for the individual that is homeless and it's a safety concern for those around them if they're if they have a mental health issue and um, they're doing something again that the easiest way for me to say it is it makes people uncomfortable sometimes it is might be a danger Um, but uh, you know we've got to address it as a community well the, the homeless are focused at downtown, and that's because the, most of their It's because uh, the services that they services take advantage of are downtown. Yeah, the kitchens. The and, food lines and, and yeah, all that type of and thing. And Carpenter Church. Sure. And, and that's why they're on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Um, something I know a little bit about with our ministry at the church with the homeless. We go around and, and, and feed mm-hmm. them. 
So we kind of know where they are, mm -hmm. and they are focused in downtown Lubbock. You don't really find them elsewhere. And, but it's one of those problems, man. I, I don't know what you do with them. You, you know, they were <clears throat> there was a problem where they were at the downtown library. This has been a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And they were, uh, they were just gathered around there. And uh, I know the police moved them. Uh, they moved them away. Yeah. Moved them somewhere else. You don't see them down there anymore. Well, like like uh, Councilman said, if we enforce the ordinances, it may, uh, it may at least make areas less comfortable, and they might move to an area that that they feel like they'd be yeah. more comfortable. I don't know. But but the problem, the problem is there. Uh, and, and again, I know this from what we've done. There's a lot of them that are singles. And they want to be alone by themselves for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And you know, if if they were uh, autonomous, you know, I mean, if there was a if they would would go as a group, you could easily have, have, take them somewhere. But there's so many of them that want to be uh, that want to be alone. Uh, Seven fifty-two a.m. Quick break. We'll come back just with a couple of minutes remaining after this. And we are back here on KFY Mornings with Matt and Dave and uh, City Councilman Steve Massengill. Glad to have you out this morning. Glad to be out. Thanks for having me. I wanted to close with, uh, there's another article in the paper this morning on, I think you, uh, Chief Mitchell's uh, quoted in that, and it talks about speeding and uh, traffic control in Lubbock. Uh, this past year we had 51 traffic fatalities in Lubbock. That's twice what we had in the year prior. And uh, we, we see evidence that we have, we need to be retrained to drive. And uh, so you'll see significant efforts with LPD and uh, other law enforcement agencies um, within the city limits uh, controlling speed. And I know no, nobody wants a ticket, but I would just uh, remind everyone that driving is a personal responsibility and to pay attention and slow down. It's not okay to speed. And then... The other thing I would say is put your phones down. You know what? We live yeah. with enough technology today that there's no reason to be holding your phone and talking or texting and driving. And we had the chief on the show, and that's one of the things he said. Well, it's one of the major causes of the increase. Well, and distracted driving. And I see people all the time. I mean, most cars today have Bluetooth in them. Mm -hmm. Now, I, mm -hmm. I understand you may choose to drive an older car, but there's plenty of affordable technology where you could still have a Bluetooth speaker if you've got to have a conversation in your car, but you need to put your phone down. And distracted driving is a huge issue and a huge source of uh, the wrecks we have. And I think when you look at the fatalities and you look at those stats, those are preventable situations. Well, but I, I do want to say this. It's not illegal to talk on the phone. It's not. But... Uh, it is illegal to text on your phone, and I think one of the biggest problems is people are putting their heads down while they're looking at their phone, and they're not able to, to pay attention to what's going on on I the road. I see people every day messing with their phones, driving at 65 or more on the loop, and it just, I mean, put it down. It's not, not worth it. I mean, an accident can happen so fast that can change your life. And and so I think you'll see significant effort, and uh, we'll continue to talk about uh, traffic safety and how uh, we can be better drivers in Lubbock. No, yeah. and, and one of the things uh, that uh, Judge Parrish brought up is that when people see police officers, they slam their brakes, and sometimes that causes a wreck. So don't slam on your brakes if you see a police That's officer. Right. You know, you're already busted if you saw them, okay? Slow yeah. down. But don't slam on your brakes. The person behind you doesn't have time to react. Well, again, thank you, Councilman. Thanks for having me. Look forward to seeing you again uh, in a couple of weeks. Sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, it is uh, coming right up on the 8 o'clock break here on KFYO Mornings with Matt and Dave. We'll return with more the uh, last half hour of our show after this. <laughs> 